G'day, Wombat here, and in today's budget gear, we're going to take a look at the X4 from Court. done the X1 and we've done the X11. So now we're going to have a look at something that sits right sort of in the middle of the X range for court and that is the X4. This is very similar to the X1 with a few minor upgrades. So let's have a look at it. It is a basswood body with a maple neck. Now court on their website state that this is a U-shaped maple neck. I'm not 100% sure about that. To me, it's almost a D. It's a very uh, thin neck, very uh, flat, but it doesn't quite get flat enough maybe for a, for a D. So it, if, it, if it's a U, it's a very, very thin U. Um, nice feeling though, um, unfinished as you can see there. It's kind of unfinished neck. Um, the tuners are of course a no name, uh, or at least no branded tuner. Um, so I'm assuming Court makes them. The fretboard itself, of course, is rosewood with 24 jumbo frets. And um, down this end, we have two humbuckers, which um, on this particular model, unlike the X1, are uh, EMG HZs. And I believe they are the OC1 set, um, open coil, more classic style, still high gain humbuckers. Um, we have a vintage tremolo, which of course is Court's very own Full Action 2 um, vintage trem. A volume and a tone, a three-way selector, and of course a coil tap on the tone knob for the humbuckers to split them into single coils. So that's how it's appointed. Um, let's talk about how, how the guitar goes. Um, First of all, the neck, super fast. I mean, these are sh more shreddy style of uh, a series of guitars from Court, the X series. Um, and so this neck just falls right in line with the rest of the series. It is really fast. That, that really unfinished style neck is always super quick to get around. Uh, flat fingerboard too, which helps in you, you getting around it. Um, flat, but not so flat that it's lifeless, there's a bit of life in it, so it, um, the neck itself was actually quite nice to play, quite fast and quite fun. Um, the back of the neck, of course, has got that, uh, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, that, that chamfered um, heel joint, which gives you really good upper fret access, um, just like it did on the X1, and, um, and of course on the X11. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the neck. Let's talk about the bridge really quickly. The bridge is almost a floating bridge. Not quite, it's, it's not floating enough for you to get much up pull, but you can get a tiny little bit up pull before you hit the body. Um, of course, the down is quite a ways down. However, it is a vintage bridge. So, although it's a trim, being a vintage style two point trim, it's not going to survive big dive bombs. I mean, it's, that's just gonna put it out of tune. There really isn't many vintage style bridges on the market that will survive that kind of tremolo abuse. It's really meant for just those nice little waggly little um, play around on a chord kind of thing to add a little bit of vibrato. Um, and it does it all right. It actually doesn't do too bad a job of staying in tune, which is really nice because some of these cheaper bridges really um, just don't get the job done. If you touch it, it goes out of tune. And we experience that a lot on cheaper guitars, but this one doesn't do too bad a job. So the pickups. Um, I'm a big fan of EMG HZs. Um, I don't think they get the credit that they deserve 
uh, of just how good a pickup they are. Everybody thinks a VMG needs to have a battery in it and be active, and but these for, for passive pickups really do sound good. They are high gain, so metal is not an issue. Um, I, most of my metal guitars that I play on run the HZs, and the thing I like about them is they do metal really, really well, but they don't do a bad job of cleans. And a lot of the time with a, a heavy output pickup, the cleans are really awful. These guys do a pretty decent job of the clean stuff. So metal was definitely a go. The clean stuff was quite good. The rock stuff, of course, these, these picks up, pickups were designed to eat distortion. That's just what they do. Um, blues, however, was a whole different ball game. They are really a little bit too high output to carry blues, a blues tone really well. In fact, you, you normally set up a blues tone and these things just push it into a rock tone because they've got that much output. So you find you have to reduce the amount of gain and start fiddling with that kind of a sound. So they didn't do blues really well. But when we add the coil tap into the situation, that reduces the output quite significantly and the blues tones that we know and love were right there. Okay, so that's the playing of it. What about the price? I mean, this is a budget gear after all. We all want a good deal. We all want a guitar that's going to play well and uh, live up to our expectations, but we don't want to have to pay a lot of money for it. So firstly, a big shout out to Variety Music, who once again has provided me with this instrument for, for us to have a look at. Um, and the recommended retail price on the X4 is about $4.99, so it's right at the edge of that budget gear price line that we, we run here. Um, Variety, however, are doing these for $280. Now, that's Australian dollars, and things do change, but this is a whole lot of guitar for $280. I mean, that is a phenomenal deal. That is almost half price. And man, you are getting something that is fun and fast. And if you're into that kind of um, shred sort of music, um, Joe Satriani or Steve Vai kind of thing, but you can't afford an Ibanez or one of their signature models, this may be the guitar for you. So there you are. That is the Court X4 and it is a beauty. I really like this color too. It's something about these metallic reds that, um, that, you know, they're a bit deeper in color and I really quite like. So there you are, that is it. All right, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And as always, rock on, guys.